Hi everyone, welcome to the Burning Eyes Tech channel. In today's lesson of Server 2019, we're going to be taking a look at some of the following topics. The first of which is organizational units, better known as OUs in the IT community. I mean, that's just a lot easier to go and say versus organizational units, which is quite a mouthful. The second is going to be users in Active Directory. And then lastly, we have groups in Active Directory. Now, in case you're wondering, don't stress, we are going to be demonstrating these practically on Server 2019's Active Directory for you guys in a few moments. We just need to first discuss what the theory is behind all of this. So first things first, what is organizational units? Okay, everyone, the first thing you need to know before we can actually discuss our use is everything contained in the Active Directory is known as objects. Now in this picture example I have here for you on the right, you can see some of those objects. Well, pretty much everything here is actually an object. Everything you see there, guess what, is an object. Now obviously they aren't just objects, but we'll get to that in a moment. For now, it's important for you to know that everything in your Active Directory database is an object. Now when it comes to the organizational unit topic, or OU I should say, an OU is actually a container for those objects. Now, besides OUs, there are also some built-in containers. So you can either go and create yourself a container, which is known as an OU or organizational unit, or you can go make use of some of the built-in containers. Pretty much everybody's going to go make their own containers. So we've mentioned OUs are containers, and now we've also mentioned you've got built-in containers, but it doesn't actually just stop there, boys and girls the actual domain itself is actually a container as well, believe it or not. It's also a form of built-in container. <laughs> yeah, gets trippy, doesn't it? A domain is a container. It's the highest level of container, so to speak. It's the core administrative unit. It's the core container. Now, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and confused about this concept of containers and this concept of object in those containers, don't worry. I promise you it will make perfect sense very soon. Maybe not in today's lesson, but if you follow this course, it'll make perfect sense to you. It's going to eventually become second nature or muscle memory even to you. You're not going to believe that this actually confused in the beginning. I myself was there. In the beginning, I was like, what the cheese is this? Confuse the data out of me, and if you just stick with the program or stick with the course or whatever it is you're doing, very shortly you're going to see, oh, you know what, that was actually very simple, and you can actually wish you can go back in time and slap yourself. <laughs> That's how easy this actually is. It seems overwhelming, it seems complicated in the beginning, but it's actually easy as pie. So don't stress, guys. Okay, guys, and then just one last bullet point here, then we can go on to a demo. Um, OUs have three main purposes. The first of which is keep objects organized, as we've established now because of the container scenario or the container concept, I should say. Second is delegate administrative permissions, something we're still going to get to at a later lesson, but you have the ability to go and delegate permissions. We did somewhat touch on that in one of the previous episodes, where we actually showed you guys how to go and delegate permissions. And the last of which is manage group policy application. So when you go and manage stuff here in Active Directory, it's going to allow you to go manage your group policies and allow you to go and apply them accordingly to groups instead. So something we'll cover later on once we actually cover group policies. So I think let's go do a quick demo and actually show you guys how and where you can go create an organization unit. And while we add it, we'll do the user accounts in Active Directory and also do the groups in Active Directory. All right, everyone, so here we are on my server 2019. As you can see, I've already gone into the Active Directory users and computers. Um, you'll notice that it's actually the same as the picture I had in that little, that little presentation of mine just a moment ago. So what I've gone and done here is I've created myself my own little domains called burningicetech.com, the same as the name of my channel. And uh, some of these folders here, some of these containers are built in. Built in, that's built in. That's built in, built in, built in. A lot of these are built in. That one is built in. The ones I went and made is this one here called user accounts. Everything inside of it, the, the different you know towns here or different cities, you know, New York, London, Tokyo, Paris, all of those are organizational units I made, my own little containers. You can see in inside of each of these little cities, in this case London, I've got organizational units within that organization unit. So it's a container within a container. 
And these ones are basically just labeled according to department. The way you structure this, the way you organize this is completely up to you and your imagination. Um, unfortunately, if you're going to be joining an existing environment, the chances are that they already have an active directory. It's already been set up. Your job is just going to be to maintain that existing environment. It's very rare you're going to find the opportunity to go and build this from scratch yourself, unless you're going to do it in a test environment or a training environment like this. So you can see I've got an OU here for user accounts. I've got an OU here for client computers, also for each brand and so on and so forth. So first of all, how do you create an organizational unit? If you want to make one at the top level here, let me just collapse all of that. So if you want to make one a main organizational unit or a main container, if you will, you can go right click on a domain. That's if you, you might have more than one domain here. Most companies only have one. I only have one, but some companies actually have more than one domain. So you right click on a domain in question, you hover over new, and there you'll see organizational unit or OU for short. If I click on that, it's going to allow you to choose a name. So what it is, I can't tell you because it depends on your imagination. What do you want to go and use this for? So in my case, I made one called user accounts and I made one called client computers. I'm going to call this test just for now so you can get the gist of it. Okay. Here we go. New organizational unit. You'll notice the icon looks slightly different as well. And if I want to make an organizational unit within that organizational unit, you right click on that organizational unit. Ooh, I'm just going to say OU just for short. Hover over new once again. OU. And there you go. Test two. So you see how I did that. So the top one. I did by right clicking on the domain, went to new, OU, that's how I made the top one. And to make a sub one inside of the first one, you just right click on the first one, go to new, and then same procedure. If you want to make another one in that one, it's the same procedure, just repeat, repeat. All right, so I'm going to go and minimize that for now, or collapse that for now, and just expand these two again. So now we know that is an organizational unit or a container, that is an organizational unit or a container. And I did that myself manually. These are, these are not built-in ones. Now, why you create them? Like I said, it can be any amount of reason. I went and did this for each branch. I, I basically thumb sucked this. So I made up a bunch of branches. At each respective branch, you will have departments. That's just thumb sucking. I just pretended to make a bunch of accounts. I only did that for one branch, only for London right now. Now, if you want to go and create yourself a user, this can be done in more than one way. The quickest and easiest way is probably to go and right click on that particular department. So let's say I want to create a user for the ID department. I can click on that container or OU, right click on it, new, and instead, this time, instead of clicking here on OU, you can go to user. You can also see there's group. Alternatively, you can go right click on a blank space here, hover over new, user, group or organizational unit. It's worth noting that this is not the only way to go and do it. I mean, I just showed you two ways, but there's many other ways. We are currently in the Active Directory users and computers, but you can also go and do a lot of the stuff via the administrative center. So a lot of these topics are still going to be discussed in a later point in time in a different episode. In a later episode, I'm also going to show you guys how to actually go and install server. How do you go and install a domain controller? How do you go and install the ADDS role? How do you go and make your own domain? All of these are lessons that's still in the works, which is going to be coming very shortly. So just stay tuned. So for now, I'm just going to show you guys in the users and computers. Right click here, new user, or right click there, new user, potato, potato, they say. New user. Drag this out of the way. You specify the person's name and last name, ideally. That's not assuming it's not being used by something else like a scanner or a printer or something else. So for now, let's just pretend it's a real person. I'm going to call this person Bob. Last name Smith, maybe. Here you get to specify this user's login name. So whatever this person is going to be typing in the morning when they get to their desk, what will Bob type in to log on? Is he going to just, just type in Bob? Or is he going to type in Bob of the first letter of his last name, which is what I would recommend? Depending on the size of this organization, there's a very good chance someone else might have that name. There might be five or ten bobs. So to avoid conflict, it might be a better idea to go and use a person's name with the first letter of their last name, or the name and last name, or use their last name in conjunction with the first letter of their first name. So it could be something like Smith B, you know, Smith or Bob. So it could be something like that. Choose your domain if you have more than one. So I'm just going to choose that one for now. Next. 
what is this person's password going to be? So in most cases, from my experience, this is going to be a temporary password. So you're going to make it something short, sweet, and easy to remember. Because this person, being Bob in this case, will most likely only use this password once. The very first time he or she logs on, it's going to prompt him or her to change their password to something more permanent. So that's now assuming you go and leave it on this option here. It says, user must change password at next logon. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys so you can see that it actually ticked that little box. User must change password next logon. So that means whatever password I type in here is going to be a one-off. It's a temporary password. Bob is going to type this password once. As soon as he logs on for the very first time, it's going to say you need to change the password. It's going to ask him for a new password and he's going to have to confirm that new password and there we go. Um, the only time it's going to expire after that is if you've got some sort of expiration policies going for you in your domain. Something we will still discuss later in this course. Other options you can go and choose here is user cannot change password. We don't normally choose that unless it's some sort of admin account or unless this is an account that's going to be used by a computer of some sort, maybe a printer, a scanner or something else like that, a synchronization account perhaps. Password never expires, also something we only use for admin accounts or for something that can't go and change its own password, once again a computer or something. Account disable is not something we find ourselves using often. That is if you find yourself needing to create a template, that is something we're going to get to. And that's definitely going to be something in the exams, if you guys are going to be writing a server exam, although most of these server exams have actually been retired now. Um, so that would have been something in the exam. Now it's no longer going to be in the exam. So if you want to go and create yourself a template, you can go and choose that. Alternatively, it could be used for someone that just recently um, left the company. They resigned, they handed in their resignation, they unfortunately passed away. You know, It could be for any amount of reason. Maybe they're on leave. So whenever that happens, we disable that account as a security precaution. In some cases, some companies will even move that account to a different organizational unit, which means all the privileges and permissions that account has is obviously temporarily revoked for now. So that's why we would go and do that. And as soon as that person comes back, assuming he or she comes back, you'll simply just go and re-enable the account. That can be done very easily. So for now, let's leave it on the defaults. I'm going to maybe, maybe I'll just say positive pause never expires. To provide a password in here, just give me a second. Here we go, password's in. Let's click next, finish, and that's that, boys and girls. So, as you can see in the IT department under the London branch, I have just created myself my first user being Bob. So, I'm gonna go and create another one, very easy new user Sam. Zucker, I'm, I'm sucking it really today. Zucker S. Next. Password. Password never expires. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it obviously depends on you what you're going to choose here. Next. Finish. Here we go. So we've just created ourselves users. So there's going to be a lot more detail to this in a later lesson. So stay tuned for that. How do we create ourselves a group though? Same story. You right click on the organizational unit where you want this group to be. New group. And I think it speaks for itself. A group is a grouping of users, as you can see the little icon there. You can actually put a group within a group if you so desire. So perhaps in this instance of mine, with my example here, I can go create a group for HR and all the people in the HR department will be in the group called HR. There's going to be a group for sales, same story, one for finance, IT and marketing and so on and so forth. Now, there could be more than one. There could be a group called managers as well. Now, whenever I need to apply some sort of policy or permission, let's say for the sales department, are you going to really want to go to each and every user and apply that permission? Definitely not. That's going to be a painstaking process. So instead of working harder, we work smarter. We're going to go and apply that policy or permission to the group itself. So the sales group, if I apply a permission to the sales group, everybody in the sales department is going to get that permission. Would it be an allow or deny or whatever the case might be, it's going to apply to everyone. That, my dear friends, is called a bulk operation. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Now you might find some users could potentially be in more than one group. For example, Someone could be in the sales group because he or she is in the sales department, but for all we know, that one particular user could also be a manager in the sales department. So that individual could also be in another group called managers. So if I need to apply a permission or a policy or whatever to that sales user, 
I'm going to apply to the sales group and he or she will get that sales permission. If it's something relevant to managers only, that person will still get that permission. So for now, I think let's go and give ourselves a, a group name here. Considering that we are in IT, it might only be appropriate to call it IT. Okay. And there we go. We've got ourselves a group. You can go and add people to a group via multiple ways. You can either go right click on the group and say add to group, type in the person's name, which we'll do in a moment, or you can go to the person, right click on the individual, say add to group and type in the group's name the other way around. Or, so I've already shown you two ways, or you go to the group's properties, you go to members and you add the member here. I mean, that's already just three ways and there's actually more. I just showed you three ways and it's actually that doesn't it doesn't even stop there it's it's crazy it's nuts i think for now let's just go and i don't know right click on bob and say add to group bobby bob bob bobby D, bob 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 let's go and add bob to what it so i'm gonna search for the group you can see it finds the group and it's going to be the same story if you go to the to the group itself and you say add user and you run a search for argument's sake let's say bob it's going to detect Bob and you can just choose Bob from the list or the right Bob if there's more than one. And there you go. So I'm going to say OK. And there we go. The add to the group operation was successfully completed. So now if I were to go and right click on that group and I were to go here to properties, members, you'll find that there is Bob. Bobbity Bob Bob has been added. If I really want, I could have gone and added more people here as well. It's the same thing. There is so many ways to get something done in IT. It's just nuts well guys that is the theory for today so we've explained what an organizational unit is how you can go and create it where you can go and create it we've explained what a user account is where you can go and do that how and the same goes for groups i hope this video has been informative if it has been please give it a like if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing i hope i've earned your subscription if you don't subscribe you're not going to know when the new lessons comes out mind you and um, I will see you guys next time on the next lesson being episode 7. Bye guys.